So, um, a lot of you have been asking me about constraints, how I use them, uh, the best way to use them, uh, how professionals use it, all of that good stuff. I haven't really covered it here in Animation Power Tips, but I'm going to fix that today. Let's get started with this new episode. Welcome everyone. I hope you guys had a great week. So this is Animation Power Tips. This episode is sponsored by Autodesk. Thank you very much to Autodesk for sponsoring this episode. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we are going to be covering constraints. Constraints are an incredible way for you as an animator to get an object to follow another or to get a hand to kind of like be in a position and stay there. All of that stuff is a really essential tool for you as an animator. Now, I'm going to actually kind of like tell you guys about how I use constraints because here's the thing. I have been through the road of actually trying different types of constraints and actually use it professionally in um, my workflow. And it's been a bit of a journey from beginning on using all types of constraints, point constraint and all that stuff to then all the way to now that I use only parent constraint and then I use a few tools to help me fake constraint one object to another when I need it. What do I mean by all that? Let's jump on the computer and I'll tell you all about it. Let's do it. Basically, this scene is it's, it's just a guy running. Um, it's a raw mocap, so you can see that right here, he has like, he's jumping over an object and then going down, kneeling behind the object as if he's hiding himself from somebody that is going to shoot him or something. Now, this piece of mocap here, it's, as I mentioned, is a raw piece of mocap. So you can start to see a, a few of the issues. And I think this is actually pretty a pretty good example to kind of show you guys why I use certain things and why you don't use others. Now, um, here, as you can see, like he is, his hands are completely uh, static. So they are like this all the time. And when he touches something right there, you can see that he's not really touching anything and it's moving through that object. And then his feet are actually touching the, um, the cube. And then he kind of goes down and hides. There's no weapon in his hand. Normally in the studio, your lead would have told you what kind of weapon he was he holding, why was he holding it like that? Because when you go into the mocap volume to record some stuff, you already have planned out um, what kind of weapon is the character holding so you can have the sense of weight. But in this case, I'm interpreting here that he's using an AK-47 because right at the beginning of the, of the shot, you can see that he's using both hands to hold the weapon and then he like takes one hand off and goes back to holding the weapon with both hands. So we have an AK-47 here uh, ready to use uh, or an M16, I should say. And then we're going to put this into his hands and solve what kind of constraints do we need to get this scene to work well. Constraints, uh, you can see, are here. I'm just going to like take this off from there. There's different types of constraints that get you to a certain solution in your animation. Uh, there's a point constraint, a parent constraint, orient constraint, scale constraint, aim constraint, a pole vector constraint. Now, I'm not going to go through them all because there's videos out there that will explain to you exactly what each one does. I'm just going to tell you that I only pretty much use parent constraint all the time. And I don't use, I don't remember the last time that I have used either a point constraint or an orient constraint or a scale. Like none of those I have used for years. And the reason why is I either want an object to be carried all throughout the scene, attached to a place, or I wanted the freedom as an animator to choose when that object attaches or detaches from that hand or the hand attaches to an object or detaches. So I need flexibility as an animator to make that choice. And then I can key that thing and make sure that it looks as good as possible. I'm going to explain to you guys why. Now, for example, I have a weapon that I know based on this animation that the weapon is always following the right hand. 
If I play this clip, you'll see that if you can imagine the weapon being on his right hand, he never lets go of the weapon at any point. He goes all the way to the end with the weapon and then he actually stays there and the other hand helps the right hand. Because there's no change to where the weapon stays or leaves or moves, I want to parent constrain that controller or that hand to the weapon so I can actually use the hand to animate where the weapon goes. We have our weapon here and I'm going to put the weapon on his hand as best as I can with the time that I have. So it's following roughly in the right place. So I'm going to go over here, start placing it more or less in his palm as best as I possibly can. So the hand is following correctly where I need it to be. So around there, that's where I want the weapon. Now, this is the main controller of the weapon. I want to select my parent and then my child and then go to constrained parent. Now, if I move this hand, you can see the weapon is actually going um, and following the hand, which is exactly what I need. And if I play this animation, you'll see that the weapon is right there following that hand as he's running. So pretty cool, I think, right? So that looks pretty cool. I think that actually kind of follows the action pretty well. We can move on to the next thing. Now, the next thing that I have to do is take care of my fingers, obviously, but I want I want kind of like take the time right now because you need to pose these fingers so they actually hold in the, the weapon correctly. Um, I won't waste the time doing it, but you can imagine that, you know, now we would actually kind of like go through, pose the fingers, make sure that the fingers are here. So whenever you move the hand, it's kind of like looking correctly. Now I'm going to move on to the next bit, which is of interest, which is dealing with this left hand. Unlike the other hand, actually grabs things and like releases them. I could easily go to a point constraint or make sure that I actually had some other kind of constraint over a certain period of time and then release that constraint and then go back to that constraint again at some point and do the thing. I don't like that method of working because it's a lot of technicality behind that animation. What I like is to actually do a fake constraint so I know that from this point to this point is a constraint and then from this point to that point is not constrained anymore. Now for that, uh, you can use a lot of different free tools. Um, Animbot has these tools as well, but I prefer to use Red9. And the way I use it is basically the following. So I know that I want this hand here to instead of being in this place, to be holding the weapon uh, somewhere here, right? Because that's where you need to hold it. So you go ahead and actually create a new animation layer uh, here on top. And you need to actually pl start placing the hand where you want it to be. Now, the way I work, I like to work with layers is by setting anchors first and then moving the animation. So like, I know that this first frame, I need a key here to actually offset the hand. So I set a key, but I don't move the hand. That's just an anchor. Now I want that hand to follow through with the weapon up to about frame five. And then around, around frame five, I want that hand to release the weapon and then go into this movement of actually touching the top of the of the cube. So I put a, a key there because I know I need to man manipulate that. Now, if I actually keep on going, I know that at that point, the hand needs to almost like twist um, while he, he's actually going through that motion. So I set a key and then he needs to detach from that cube and then touch again. So that's another, another key anchor. Once again, needs to uh, get that motion like that rotating motion. So it needs to stay still as well at this point is moving So I need to actually set a key more or less Actually, it's not 32. It's around frame 35 And then I want to maybe like get the hand to kind of slide through that surface all the way down here and Then maybe at that point you just release and go down now towards here at the end, the same thing, right? Like you want the, the, that hand to kind of like attach to that weapon, maybe around frame 52, be connected. And then from frame 52 to frame 88, it's gonna be exactly the same position and it's gonna to stick to the end. Now, how do I go about doing this? Now that I have my anchors, 
I can actually go in and start posing that, that hand to be in the position that I want. So I want that hand to be around there with the fingers. Uh, so once again, I'm not going to pose the fingers, but you can imagine that hand wrapping up on, on, that, on that grip. So now that hand stays there. And then all the way to frame five, I want that hand to follow through the weapon, remember? So once again, I use that fake constraint that I was talking about. And in this case, with uh, Red 9, I use Track and Stabilize, which is a tool that I love a lot. And what I do, I'm just going to minimize everything else to not confuse you guys. What I do is actually use the main object that I want to follow. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use this controller here of the weapon because that's the main controller. I want this to be the parent and then this to be the child. And I want them to follow each other for this much. So remember, this is going to be what's followed and this is following this controller. So from zero to five, I want to be exactly the same um, as it was on number one. So if I go to this time range and I process forward, look what happens. Like now the left hand is actually following the weapon throughout this range. It's exactly what I needed, right? Now on frame six, I need to actually kind of zero out that animation. So I have pretty much to say the frame that I need to get it back into this action. So I need this to happen around frame eight. I can delete frame six and I get like a blend between frame five. Now select the hand and then I want, obviously this is a snap here. So I want the hand to be around frame eight to be here but frame six is a bit too much of a difference. So I'll delete frame six and then I will actually get these hands to be a little bit more in keeping with what, what's, what's the, what the action is going on, like right there, see? So that's a little bit better. It's not great at all, but it's still a little bit better. So we need to actually get that hand to be a little bit more in keeping with the action that is going to maybe delete frame five. I'm getting Euler. Just going to check my graph editor quickly right here going to my Euler field the filter so fast forward a little bit and you can see that the hand is actually like following that rifle a little bit better right a little bit of a snap between the, this 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 key and this key which we can actually remove right there and then um, I also took the liberty to kind of like clean up this bit a bit more. So as you can see, I did exactly the same thing as I did with the rifle. And what I did is actually get this hand as quick as I possibly could to kind of like be static on one position and then move a little bit away and then stay static on that other position and then drag itself down right there. See? So imagine actually having the hand properly like placed on on this on this uh, flat surface, and then as you go through, those fingers will actually move along as the body is twisting, right? So I didn't do the fingers here, but you can imagine the hand is stopped. Now the fingers need to actually like split out and then twist, and then touch again the surface, and then drag on the surface. So you get a lot of that like um, physical touch and to make sure that things are not the same. It's not like static all the time. But when you add detail, make sure that you actually add a little bit of finger magic into it. As you can see, like that's much more in keeping with the surface and it looks like he's actually jumping and touching the surface correctly. Um, I also added a little bit of this this connection right here at the end. So if I actually zero all this out or uh, disable my layer that I worked on, you can see that this layer, like the hand was all the way there in the end, right? So what I've done is actually grab a place that I liked, which is around there, and then picked up my parent and then my child. And I went from frame 60 to frame 80, do the same thing, track and stabilize, go forward and you can see whatever the rifle was doing, now the hand is doing. So they're following each other perfectly now, which is a pretty neat way of actually kind of like getting that constraint to kind of stay in one place. And you can still, whenever you want, go to a key that you don't like, perhaps there's a little bit of a snap or something like that. And you can feather that animation 
so it can be a little bit better like that right so now having that motion means that you can have a little bit more of that i'm holding the rifle and you can build that stuff on top of the animation that you had before and to me it's much more of a free way of creating the same thing for the hands if i actually disable the layer and i'll show you how the hand was touching the the block like it was not touching and it was not touching and it was moving and then it was moving away now what i've done after it was basically create the same kind of constraint that i was doing before where the hand just kind of like gets stuck a little bit more and then gets stuck a little bit more and then i created it like this that it was not there before he was just moving it the hand away i thought you know nice touch i'm going to build on top of that animation and i'm going to drag that hand off that surface because there's no point on me doing this because it's too much effort so i'm just going to like drag slowly the hand away from that from that place now the next steps after this would be build the fingers build the rotations build animation on top of animation now that i'm happy with where the placement of things are i would actually collapse that layer to then create another uh, layer on top that i could actually start creating the fingers and all the the, the stuff on top because I can actually clean the base layer as much better than I can create clean the animation layer on top. So I like to always collapse things, save the file, make sure that you save the file first, but then collapse things, start cleaning and working your magic on top of all of this goodness. I think that's all I have in order to keep it as short as possible. <laughs> but I hope this actually highlights the potential of having tools in order to create fake constraints because that's much more that you can do as an animator with constraints that are not technical and they don't actually constrain you as an animator to actually have to break constraints and create constraints all the time because that gets really messy really quickly based on my experience. So this is how I prefer to work. I know animators for sure that love constraints and work with constraints beautifully. They can dance around them and major kudos to them. But to me, I genuinely like to keep things as simple as possible and as flexible as possible so I can actually play with the keys because I really want to play with my keys so I can always kind of like push things a bit more or like when I did the hand kind of dragging through the surface that was not there in the mocap there is something that I added on top as an animator so not having a constraint there so I can then play with my keys and then add that movement within the action makes the action better right and that's ultimately what you want to do as an animator that's all. That's all I had for you guys. I hope that was simple enough. Please drop a comment down below if you have any questions about this. And also drop a comment down below on how you work with constraints if you are a veteran that works with constraints. Because it is always good to know more than one way of working as well. Right? So, as always, thanks very much to my Patreons for supporting me. Here's all their names. They are heroes to me for supporting me in this channel and allowing me to continue to do this for all of you. And that's all I had for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was useful. And as usual, stay well, stay safe. Peace.